The Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show is sponsored by Acunet Mortgage, an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 255368, and Acunet Realty Advisors, which is a separate company from but still affiliated with Acunet Mortgage. Putting a roof over your head without the headache. A house in the middle of our street. Get answers to all of your home buying questions. This is the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. And welcome to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show. I'm Mark Segrist, along with Acunet Mortgage and Acunet Realty Advisors owner Brian Wickert and Chief Millennial Loan Consultant David Wickert. Pleasure to be with the guys again this morning. Now, if you have a question or comment, give us a call or text Text us on our Acunet Mortgage Talk and text line at 414-799-1620. Gentlemen, good to be with you again this Sunday morning. And a Happy New Year to you and all of our listeners out there. We're going to get started this year by kind of reviewing the year that was in 2017 relative to real estate activity and also think about what's ahead for 2018. We're going to also take a look at our top three first-time homebuyer loan programs along with what it takes to write a winning offer in 2018. Are you ready, David? I'm ready. All right. I got up early today and I took a look at the multiple listing service data from the Greater Milwaukee Association of Realtors, of which I am a card-carrying member. You have an actual card? Uh, no. Okay. But I, I've got the receipt. The idea of? Okay. All right. And so I took a look at the uh, number of home sales for 2017 in the five-county Milwaukee metropolitan statistical area, which includes Milwaukee, Ozaki, Racine, Washington, and Waukesha counties. And I'm here to tell you that there were 18,199 single-family detached homes that were sold using a Realtor. Okay. Uh, and the MLS system in 2017. All right, David, I don't know if you peaked or not, but is that more or less? you got 50-50 chance on this one, Mark. More or less than the year before. I'm going to say the same. The same. Uh, Mark, you want to go more or less? Okay, I'm going to be optimistic this morning, guys. I'm going to say slightly more. You are uh, 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 prescient. 216 more units, or a 1.2% increase over 2016, which is remarkable for what reason, Chief Millennial Loan Consultant? That there are more buyers than sellers out there right now. How's about lack of supply? I mean, yeah. Right, lack of supply. Uh, You know, because we know inventory is tight. So I say that's good news. Good job by all the real estate agents and brokers out there for hustling and getting that sold. Now, the dollar volume. Of all the single-family homes that changed hands in our five-county metro area, David? Up. Up, yep. 6.4%. Okay. Totaling $4.44 billion, with a B, dollars. Okay. So notice that your unit count went up 1.2. Your dollar volume went up 6.4%. Okay, so math wizard, David, what does that mean has to have gone up? The purchase price, yes, the value of people's homes. That's right, and that increased by eleven thousand one hundred dollars for the year. It came in at two hundred and eleven thousand. That's a five point six percent increase in the median sales price for single family homes over two thousand sixteen. Now, does that mean everybody's house went up five point six percent? No, absolutely not, because the MLS data does not take into account square footage, number of bathrooms, all those other things that could influence the value of a home. But it's a definitely uh, it's going in the right direction. Going in the right directions. Now, listings for the year total 23,174. That is 82 fewer homes, which on a percentage basis is 0.4% fewer. So roughly the same number of listings, a little bit increase in the sales. So okay. Does that mean people are settling for homes that they really wouldn't buy if there were other options out there? I think that's probably true. Okay. And then I did one more thing. I looked back at 17 versus 15, and by golly, we sold 1,277 more homes than two years ago. So 100 more per That, that amazes me because I just don't feel as though there are more homes there are. It's the same number of you know total homes in Milwaukee. It's just well, you do more people are selling. Yeah, you get some new construction in there where the builders are selling using real estate agents. You know, for, on spec homes. Oh, okay. So that could help. But you're right. The number of listings is fewer in this past year than two years ago. There are more homes listed for sale. Okay. So it's still tight inventory is the message there, folks. By the way, prices median sales price up twenty one grand. From two years ago, wow! On single-family homes, over in the condo aisle, 
Uh, uh, there were 69 more units sold versus 2016, so that's a grand total of 3,843. The median sales price also up 6.6% to 1599. Hmm. That's a $9,900 increase in the condo market. So, you know, the overall message here is that the market remains tight. I've been searching for a I want to try this out on you guys. In my current ad that I'm running, I said tight inventory is as tight as the lid on a pickle jar. Okay? That's tight. Here's my next. You know, that's tight. That's tight. tight. What do you think of this one, Mark? Tight as the nut on a flat tire. <laughs> is that just about as good? <laughs> that's, that's even better. That's okay, very I'm good. I'm going to start using that one. There you go. You a nut first. on a tire. A flat tire. You know, when you're going in the snow and you're going, I can't get this thing off my flat tire. There I go. Yeah. No. Have you have you ever changed a flat tire, Dan? Never in my life. Oh, my God. It's fun, isn't <laughs> it? Spo- Life goals. Yeah. Oh, I, I once had one in the tunnel between um, suburban San Francisco and, and San Francisco. You have to go through a tunnel, and I was getting a flat tire inside the tunnel, which would be bad. Because you would like back up traffic for miles. Boy, talk about no elbow room, huh? <laughs> no elbow room. I made it out of the tunnel. I want you to know, and I changed it in a suit and tie with a umbrella, you know, like between my shoulder and chin. Uh, that's when we lived. Uh, David was born. David was a California boy. All right. Anyway, when we come back, I'm going to tell you about the fastest selling single family detached municipalities. I don't know if the municipalities are detached. Single-family homes. And which municipalities sold fastest in 2017 when we come back? And you're listening to the Academic Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. Home buying advice from the guys who know it best. This is the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on WTMJ. And you're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. If you have a question or a comment, call or text us on the Acunet Mortgage Talk and Text Line at 414-799-1620. Now, back to Brian and David. So we're looking at the MLS data this morning for 2017, and we know it's a hot real estate market. Well, which municipalities within the five-county metro market are the hottest? Well, tied for 10th place. And I looked at municipalities that had at least 100 sales over the course of the year. Uh, and you, I know you guys, David, is especially skeptical of this, but with an average number of days on market between the time they pound the sale in uh, for sale sign in the front yard to the date of the accepted offer, not the date of the closing, date of accepted offer at 59 days, so darn near two months, tied for 10th, South Milwaukee, Lisbon, and Caledonia. Tied for ninth place, when, uh, West Bend, Jackson, Greenfield, and that is with a 57 average days on market. In eighth place, all by itself, Whitefish Bay, with average days on market of 56. Waukesha and McQuanago, tied for seventh at 55 days. Oak Creek and Franklin, tied for sixth place at 53 days. My hometown, Muskego, Wisconsin, 50 days, standing alone in fifth place. Shorewood at 49 days. All right, and here we go, guys. Your chance to guess. I'm going to give you the top three, and you have to put them in the proper order. So you might want to grab a pencil. David, is your mind clear? I saw number one, but I'll get number two and three. Okay, here we go. So it's over to you. You get the first dibs on this, Mark. Okay. The top three in no order. Now, you're going to have to put them in order. I'm going to give you the names. New Berlin, Wauwatosa, and Greendale. Which one was in third place? You have a 33% chance of getting it right. I would say uh, Greendale's number one, Tosa's two, New Berlin three. Wow. You are you well, Greendale's one. always Greendale? Greendale's always a pretty good market, is it not? Yeah, and stealing it with a 36-day continuous days on the market. New Berlin wasn't second. I mean, there was no way you could really divine that. But New Berlin has been hot for quite a while, 39 days, and Wauwatosa in third place at 41 days. Just in terms of the size of the market, though, guys, there were 712 homes that changed hands in Wauwatosa, 424 in New Berlin, and 126 in Greendale. So wow, it's you know that kind of makes yeah. sense, right? The speediest. Oh, so it's six times the size of the yeah. Greendale market. Well, wow, you're good with math. You should look into a career in, in finance. finance. Yeah. 
So it's a supply and demand uh, deal. And here, here's the other observation that I made uh, today when I was looking at uh, sales price category. So this is by price range. And what I did is I looked at how many single-family homes are listed for sale right now in the five-county area. The answer is 3,557. So if you're out looking for a home, there is one listed for $10 million on Oconomowoc. If you need, it's a palace. It's a palace. If you want to buy that one, call me personally. I will take care of you personally <laughs> for your loan, all the way down to under twenty thousand. There are just over thirty five hundred, three thousand five hundred and fifty seven homes. So you do the math, and you say, you know, on, on the big picture, how many months supply is that? Given the fact that in December, eleven hundred ninety two properties sold. So there's a three month supply. But now let's pop the hood a little bit. So what I'm looking at is at December's sales pace, yeah. how long does it take to chew through the inventory in a particular price range? Yeah, when you're looking at 160 all the way up to 349.9, the answer is less than three months. You're looking at between 1.7 month supply in the 250 to 275 price range, you know, up to 2.6 months. So that is overheated. Now, when we come back from this next break, I am going to give you the secret, though, of why that number I just gave you doesn't matter so much right now when we come back. And you're listening to the Akinet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. Getting you into the home of your dreams. Here's more of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickard on WTMJ. And let's go back now to Brian and David, guys. The secret right now, even though the uh, inventory and the market is as tight as the nut on a flat tire, uh, is... I'm going to get two flat tires today because you said that. Because I said that. Okay, and I'll teach you how to change one. Okay, so the, the reason why the secret sauce is get out there right now, and here's why. In December, there were 1,192 home sales. In January, that drops to about 850, and so does it also drop in February to 850 sales. That means that people are afraid of the cold. They are not out there shopping right now, so this is the super short window of opportunity before the spring market heats up, because then... Okay, you go with 850 sales in January, 850 February. Oh, all of a sudden in March, now you're competing with everybody else. Three, 1,350 sales. April, 1,600 sales. By the time you get to June, it's 2,300 sales per month. So right now, while it's cold and you don't want to go out and look at homes, is the time when you need to go out and look at homes. All right? And, um, you know, that's not a guarantee you're going to get the deal. But why not get out there when there's this temporary lull? No playoff games. Right, no playoff games. So get out there. And, of course, you know, I want to talk about what it takes to have a winning offer, Young David. I'm just going to give you a contrary opinion because we have a uh, client who <laughs> – this is the other side of the coin, that's all. Good homes go quick because we have a client who listed their home in Wauwatosa, 195.5. And within 48 hours, had six offers. Six? Six. And uh, Any of them over the asking price, bet perhaps? $10,000 over asking. Okay. So, so right. the good homes still go quick. I mean, like, I'm with you. Yeah. All right. So, so, you know, okay. So both things can be true at the same time. That is, that is right. It's still tight as the nut on a flat tire. But um, the, the flip side of that, David and I both talked to the same client this week, a guy who is trying to buy a $500,000 home in suburban Chicago, and I said, he didn't send in his information, even though I talked to him in November, he didn't send in his information to get a rock solid pre-approval, and now he wants to write an offer with 10% down on this $500,000 house, which is totally doable now, by the way, because the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loan limit is now up to $453,100. And so I'm just giving him a credit verified pre approval. And then I say, So what price are you gonna offer? He goes, I'm thinking four seventy. What? I said, Are you kidding me? You know, uh 
you are not the prettiest girl at the prom here with your 10% down credit verified only pre-approval. You know, you really think that this seller, well, no, they'll come back to me with a counter offer. I said, I don't think so. They'll just tell you to go away. I got a, I texted him yesterday because I was working on this show before church, and I thought, I'm going to ask him what happened. Boom. Lost it to a cash offer. Oh. He didn't know the price. But it's like probably more than he was offering. Probably more, and I don't know what offer he ultimately made. I was definitely coaching him. Hey, if you're gonna have a ten percent down payment and a credit only, you better offer more than the asking price. Correct. You know, similar to what you're looking at, because what do people look at? You know, what are the factors that don't answer that question? Because I want to do that, you know, in in the next segment. But you know, when you're writing an offer, you have to think about what is going through the seller's mind. Put yourself in their shoes, Absolutely. as if you were selling your home. Well, what would you want? See, there you go, and. That's easy to do for repeat buyers, right, because they do have to sell their home. It's a little harder to do for first-time buyers. And so we're going to go through those details of what is it that goes through a seller's mind when they're evaluating offers. And we're going to talk about three fabulous first-time homebuyer programs that we're offering at uh, Acunet Mortgage because that is definitely the number one obstacle, wouldn't you say, David, is accumulating the down payment. Yeah. As I say, it's easier to get a $40,000 job than it is to save up $40,000. That is absolutely true. I can get on board with that statement yeah. for sure. And I literally had a first-time home buyer um, whose loan is in process, and she's pulling money out of a Roth IRA, and she was certain that you had to put down 10%. She was certain. Oh, I, I, thought, I thought you had to put there some law that you had to put 10% down. Uh, when you're buying a home. And so I, I worked up some options. We will reveal the lowest down payment loan programs available in the market, available for anybody out there who wants to work with Acunet Mortgage. And we're going to do that after the news when we come back. And you're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. WTMJ News time is 1030. Time to go to the Breaking News Center. Once again, here's Belinda. Don't break the bank to get into a house. Back to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on WTMJ. And if you have a question or comment, give us a call or text us on the AccuNet Mortgage Talk in text line. Our number is 414-799-1620. Before the break, uh, Brian, you gave us a very curious question that you folks are going to be suing in this segment, I understand. What goes through a seller's mind when considering offers? I'm curious about this. Okay, well, let's. I'm going to do it as bookends. So let's think about what's the best possible offer you can get, David. Cash. Cash offer. Suitcase full of bills. Suitcase full of bills with no home sale contingency and no... Appraisal contingency. No appraisal contingency. That would be the best. And if you're really crazy, no home inspection. Right. Okay? I've seen one of those. It was our, our friend who's in the remodeling business. Oh, sure. And so he didn't need an inspection, and he didn't care about the appraisal, and he said, I'll pay cash. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. On the other end, of the, so that's the best. Cash offer, no home sale. I would tell you most cash buyers would still and should still get a home inspection. Yeah, right? because I mean, if the roof is falling off, you want to know the that. basement wall. I mean, maybe, the, maybe if it was new construction, I don't know. I'd still... Do a home inspection if it was me. All right. On the other side, the worst possible offer you can get is, here's my offer, David. It's subject to me selling my home. Mm -hmm. um, I have an appraisal contingency. I have a financing contingency. Oh, I'm putting 0% down. And I have a home inspection contingency, and I'm not going to give you the right to cure. And, by the way, I want you to pay my closing costs. And here's $500 in earnest money. <laughs> right. So that's the worst. So in between that, what is, I think, the, the current queen of clubs, if you're a sheep's head player, if you're going to get financing, queen of clubs is the most powerful card in sheep's head, David. I know you don't play that game. Shopscoff. Shopscoff, yeah. Um, is is the, the no appraisal. Right and a, and a big down payment. So when I, I have I have a, a friend that I'm working with right now who's going to be in the condo market, and uh, she could put twenty percent down, 
she's probably going to actually put 10% down. But when she goes to write her offer, I'm going to coach her and her real estate agent to write the offer with 20% down. Why? That she gives, could. Because she can, and it gives more psychological comfort sure. to the seller. Like, oh, this person's got a substantial down payment. Now, we try our best to make up for that for the person who has a 3% down payment because the answer to the other question we're going to get to is – we have a special first-time homebuyer program with no income limits where a person can get can put 3% down. The APR, by the way, is 4.92. And, you know, that's great, but that does scare some sellers, right? Oh, they only have 3% down. Not a lot of wiggle room. Not a lot of wiggle room. And, um, and even though we're saying, hey, man, we verified their credit, we verified their down payment, we verified their income and job, they are good to go. Still a 3% down payment scares people because if the appraisal comes in even a nickel under value, well, you're subject to negotiation. Whereas at least if the person's putting 20 or 50% down or 40 or 30, as a seller, you're thinking, well, if the appraisal comes in a they little They have the low, means to make this happen. Right. We've got some wiggle room, right? We can, we can work this out. So, so my thing of if, if I was really in a competitive market and I was tired of losing offers, I would consider writing an offer without an appraisal contingency. So I'm going to try to ask this well. So, uh, Brian, if I write my offer and I say 20% down, I'm mm-hmm. stuck and I have to put 20% down, right? Oh, thank you for giving me that softball. Okay. No, no, absolutely not. All that does is it prevents you from throwing the red flag on the field and later saying, hey, I got denied for this loan with 3% down. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, that doesn't matter because you said you were going to get a loan with 20% down. Right. Okay? So it only prevents you from throwing that flag on the field and trying to get out of the deal. You would have to produce a denial letter mm-hmm. that says you were denied for a loan with 20% down. Can we, I just want to say that again. So you can write your offer and say, I am capable of 20% putting down. 20% down. As long as you are. I think it would be fraudulent Correct. if you had $5 in your bank account and wrote an offer saying, I'm putting 20% down. Correct. But then when you click on the blue button and you say, you know, I don't want to put all 20. I want to do 10 because I want to do a couple things to this house. That was the case with my Illinois buyer Okay. because he had enough for 20% down, but he, guess what, wanted to keep some of his powder dry. Yeah for doing improvements to the home after he bought it. And we coach people on that all the time. Or just what is the cost-benefit analysis? For every $1,000 you put down, it's you know $4 in payment. So I'm just making that up. But hey, what would you rather have, $1,000 sitting in your checking account or the difference of a Starbucks coffee in your payment? Right. You, you did that, man. Why don't you do that math on this next break? Okay. And then when we come back, we're going to give everybody a review of the fabulous first-time homebuyer programs that we have available for first-time homebuyers this year when we come back. And you're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show right here on WTMJ. Important home buying questions and answers you can count on. This is the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on WTMJ. Brian and David, I thought last uh, segment was really informative. I learned a few things about uh, uh, how contingencies can potentially be a deal killer. Um, it is, it's, it's not just the price. Yeah, it's, it's not just the price. price. It's not you just the it. price. It's the price and the contingencies. And that's what, that's what good buyer's agents and listing agents will coach their clients through is evaluating, hey, yeah, don't get all distracted by this shiny above asking price offer because it's contingent on the sale of their home. Now, if you've got time to wait and blah, 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 great, but most people don't like that. Well, it also indicates so, tentative, tentative, uh, tentative attitude on the part of uh, the offer from the, from the seller's perspective, does it not? I mean, this person must be rather tentative adding all these contingencies oh, to yeah. the offer. You know, I would say the standard contingencies are financing. You know, even though we have a rock-solid guaranteed pre-approval where we've checked out everything about the buyer, you still want to have a financing contingency. It gives you extra protection. Um, you know, theoretically, you could go without it and just rely on the appraisal, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know, most people want the appraisal contingency, although I think that's one you could 
use as a negotiating. If you write without a financing contingency, you, you are compelled your, yeah. to show I got cash to buy your house. You are correct. Okay. I thought of that as the words were coming okay. out of my mouth, but I didn't <laughs> want to call myself on it. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> but that's true. If you write without a financing contingency, you have to prove that you can actually uh, do the cash. So when it comes to first time home buying, uh, I j- I'm so proud of myself. This morning, I refigured out how to make changes to our website. I've outsourced that to somebody for a couple of years. But if you go to anybody out there, goes to our acunet.com, under the Buy a Home tab, the third item down is now First Time Home Buyer Programs. And there you will find that we have a special program, 3% down, 30-year fixed rate loan, with no monthly PMI. The minimum credit score that that works for is 720 or greater. And if you were buying the median price home, uh, $211,000, and let me just find that one, $211,000. Not average, median. The median, that's right. And you were putting uh, 3% down, and the property taxes were $4,200 a year. Your monthly payment would be fourteen eighty four. So you can buy uh, the median price home, $211,000, monthly payment, Fourteen eighty four. That includes the property taxes, the principal and interest, and I budgeted six hundred dollars a year for homeowners insurance. And the total amount of money that it would take to buy that house is ten thousand seven hundred dollars. All sure. of which can come from a gift. All of which could come from a gift, or the seller can chip in. Sure. Now the seller is going to take that into account when they're evaluating your offer. All right, now, if you meet certain income requirements, so that one has no income requirements. We can do that in Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, Florida, any of the states where we lend. Mm -hmm. That is good to go, and it's good for condos, yes, single family or condos. Now, if you meet certain income restrictions, and I've got somebody who, this is is the one I'm going to use for her, the person buying the condo, Mm -hmm. um, that payment drops down to fourteen thirty eight, so it goes down another fifty bucks almost. Okay, that's our home ready sure. thirty year fixed rate loan, which also comes with no monthly PMI and three percent down. But uh, is the is the is the income limit seventy two thousand? Yes, seventy two thousand one hundred or something like that in Waukesha, in Milwaukee the- County. So that one has an income restriction. Our lowest. And I'll say best, this only applies to in Wisconsin right now for single-family detached homes, but David just told me condos are on the way. On the way. Is our WIDA 30-year fixed rate program, WIDA, W-H-E-D-A. And the WIDA loan program, the lowest payment there, this is with 0% down because we fill in, it's actually, you put 3% down on the first mortgage, but then WIDA will graciously allow us to give you a second mortgage, equal to 3% of the purchase price. The payment on that one would be $65 on the second mortgage, so the total payment for the zero down is $1,504, David. Our coworker, Drew, had a good conversation with the buyer's agent at the end of the day on Friday because yeah. he his buyer was going to go write an offer on a home this weekend yep. and called the agent and said, you know, if you include a seller credit ah. in this offer, the home buyer could just about show up to the closing with the lint in their pockets and a pen. Nice. And buy this house. I've I've had it happen where someone has brought zero dollars to yep. the closing table. I remember that using deal. that program. Yeah. Uh, by the way, total cash out of pocket though on that weed alone is oh I didn't copy the whole thing, so just give me a second here. The answer is four thousand seven hundred and twenty four dollars. So you're looking at you know there Unless, unless David just described, you know, you get the seller to pay some of those costs, which include the first year of homeowner's insurance. So when I say $4,724 to buy that $211,000 house, that includes your first year of homeowner's insurance, putting money away for next year's taxes, closing costs, the whole nine yards. So let us just say that we have all the tools in our toolbox to help first-time homebuyers at Acunet Mortgage. When we come back, from this last break in our first show of the year, we're going to talk about interest rate conditions and how low our rates currently. We'll get to that when we come back. And this is the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. Expert advice on buying a home. Here's more of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on WTMJ. Brian and David, this has been a good show. I've enjoyed it. 
Well, thank you. Yeah, we're. I'm, I'm glad to be back. You know, we, we had a lot of so many a lot noon, of noon games. Packer games there. It's, it's great to be back. Now we're on until the preseason, David. It's all okay. good. Oh yeah. Hey, I, I forgot to give the annual percentage raise. So for the three percent down, no income restriction with a maximum loan amount for first-time home buyers of just four hundred and fifty-three thousand one hundred dollars. That's a lot of house. Good for condos or single family. The APR is four point nine two. That's three percent with no monthly PMI. The uh, home ready annual percentage rate four point five three one. That has um, improved pricing, as you can see, almost a half percent better, and uh, income restrictions. And then the Huida is a uh, APR of four point five five six. That's with no monthly PMI. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, you're in the mortgage business. I was watching a lot of college football, and there's a mortgage company that does a lot of advertising on TV. Mm-hmm. Right, rhymes with Schmicken. Yeah, and I look. Uh, when they have the phone up as people are oh. clicking through, I look at the APR to try yeah. to understand what it is, and it makes my head explode, the cost that they're charging people. And they're showing it right there on the ad. Okay, sure. So sure. I just – that's how you know you work in the mortgage business. It's, I don't care about the ad. I want to know the legality of the – What's the APR the, that yeah. they're charging? Yeah. Right. 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 For All right, so $4,000 David, more. Dollars. How did we end the – oh, how much more are their closing costs? 4000 That almost sounds unbelievable, yeah. so I've camped it back to three grand okay. for the same rate. But in reality, folks, And they won't give it to you in dollars. writing, but anyway. Anyway. Uh, so at the end of the uh, week, with 25% equity and all the other right stuff, including a credit score of 740, no second mortgage, uh, escrowing for taxes on a $200,000 loan, Acunet for a purchase or a refinance, uh, could deliver 3.99% with just 400 bucks in closing costs. Wait, how many points with that? Zero points. What? Uh, and the APR is 4.02. And wait, tw- so that includes the appraisal, the closing, the title? Yeah. Uh, do I need to look at how... Are you giving the store away while I'm not watching? No, or, not at all. Okay. I, it's just we're not spending, you know, on money on college football advertising. Okay. That's all. Uh, I wanted to jump in uh, on your first-time homebuyer programs yeah. and remind you of a program called a VA loan. VA. Because VA requires 0% down. That is the best. It is the best. Because um, there's no monthly mortgage insurance at Nor is there an income that. restriction. Yeah. So if you uh, served, let's at least do some side-by-side comparison on the VA loan. There is yeah. a funding fee uh, for the VA to, you know, back up your mortgage. But um, that's, that's a great program. Yeah. And you can do a refinance, cash out up to 100% of the value of your home as well. If, any are, if there are any veterans on there, we have gotten really good at VA loans this year and yeah. have some super sharp price. Did you win that deal where you were competing against? Uh... I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on it. Uh, and uh, of the 15-year fixed, hey, in case you're, you know, sliding into retirement or thinking about doing that uh, at the close of business, on um, Friday, Acunet could deliver 3.5% on a, a new 15-year with just 600 bucks in closing costs, APR is 3.55. And I think uh, you joked earlier about uh, if you were going to pay cash for a house and I wanted to jump in and be like, but you would never do that. Oh, yeah, I would never do that. Uh, and it's just, again, the cost-benefit analysis, I did the math. Hey, if you were going to buy a $250,000 house yeah. and put 3% down. Okay, 3%. 3, down, right, got it. For every extra $1,000 you would put down, you would save five dollars in payment. All right, and I did the math on that. So, in other words, ten grand yes. is the, how much more you'd have to put down. Yep. And then you'd save, let's call it, fifty bucks a month. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, it would take you two hundred months of lower monthly payments before you would recoup your upfront slap down of extra money. That is sixteen point seven years. I guarantee. I'll you. be forty-five when that becomes worth it. Wow. I hope you still have your hair. Thank you. Because he Me has too. really good hair. <laughs> but uh, but j- just to the point on, we will offer the comparison. We're not going to tell you what's right. Because yeah. if you're the type of person who just like can't sleep at night unless my house is paid off in yeah. retirement, okay. That's fine. But if there is a, hey, we're a young family and, you know, $1,000 matters more than... Five dollars in payment. I can do something else with that thousand dollars. Let's at least have a conversation about what the give and take is. Yep, yep. So we're we're good at math and well, and, and, just and, good at, and the side by side. And uh, the cool thing we we have all of our loan consultants trained to do now is you can look at their computer screen and see the numbers side by side, and then we can manipulate them live 
Did I mention you don't have to come into the office no. to do that? No. I, I, so I, I'm competing for a, a VA loan down in Chicago. Okay. And I, I made the snarky comment because the guy said, yeah, I'm still waiting for quotes from these three other people. I was like, really? Like they couldn't just wow. get those to you right, a, right away? You know, you just saw my screen and here it is in writing delivered to you and you're waiting. So yeah. if you're the type of person who wants instant gratification well and knowledge yeah and knowledge people love that side-by-side -side thing which is awesome so all you've got to do to get the royal treatment from your friends at Acunet Mortgage if you want to get started just click on the blue button at Acunet.com that's A-C-C-U-N-A-T.com you'll also find our uh, phone number at the homepage, Acunet.com and we would be happy to help you figure out how to take advantage of these still amazingly low interest rates despite record stock markets. That's unbelievable. Or get you started on a rock solid, guaranteed pre-approval to buy. We'll see you back here same time next week. And it's been a pleasure being with the guys on this uh, latest edition of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. The news is coming up next. The preceding was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the Accident Mortgage and Realty Show are solely that of the hosts or guests of Accident Mortgage and Accident Realty Advisors and not WTMJ Radio or Scripps Media Incorporated.